What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, Apparently Anyone Who's in a Halloween Costume Works Here. Not my story, but my buddies. I just played the role of manager. Funnily enough, this isn't his first encounter with a Karen, nor his first I don't work your lady. Writing this kinda reminded me of the other time. I'll ask him for his details on that one later and post it as soon as I hear back. Though it's got a bit of entitled parents slash people and two I don't work your ladies. Here's our cast iron skillet. Note, all names are changed for privacy. Me, frozen food employee dressed as Han Solo. Leo, co-worker and D&D buddy dressed as Chewbacca. Matt, metalhead and D&D friend dressed in full plate mail. Random co-worker. Our antagonist, Karan. Background. Matt enjoys LARPing and ended up building his own suit of plate mail after following a few video tutorials. He thought it looked cool and wanted to show off to some of his LARP friends. Leo and I work at a certain blue store that sells just about everything. It rhymes with mall wart. Anyways, we were working the evening shift last Halloween and let Matt know so we could all go grab dinner at the same time. He finished work much earlier than expected and decided to swing by his place and grab his costume, then show up at our mall wart and pretend to be a statue. Leo and I are pulling a pallet of ice to the front to start stocking the icebox. All the while, I'm quoting Han and Leo is just making Wookiee noises. We're up near the front, stocking ice, when we see none other than Matt doing his best impression of a statue, then suddenly moving, startling folks near him. We both snicker at his antics as he surprises a few kids while speaking in ye old English. After unloading the whole pallet, we decided to move on to drop off our empty pallet and clock for lunch. We go over to Matt to let him know. Hey, Matt, you okay in there? We'll be dropping off this pallet, then go clock out to lunch and head right back, okay? Could thou acquire a flask of water? Tis quite hot in here. Uh, sure. Have a spare I carry. I hand him a water bottle I keep handy. Thinketh thou. I roll my eyes internally. Uh, see ya, we'll be right back. We head off to go clock for lunch and chat with a few co-workers who are just now coming back from their lunch. About four or five minutes later, when we are heading back, we hear the oh-so-familiar line, Karen with a voice like nails on chalkboard. What do you mean? You don't work here. You're just wanting to be a lazy employee. Matt no longer speaking in ye old English. No, ma'am, I don't work here. I just finished my actual job a little over two hours ago. I'm just here to go grab dinner with my friends. Look, all the employees here are dressed up in costumes. Not really. Only a handful of us were. Now, give me your manager. I want your rude butt fired. Me now arriving on the scene? What's going on here? Karen, seeing my uniform. Ah, a manager. Note, I did not have a manager's badge on. Just my uniform. Your rude employee here wouldn't do his job. He's such a lazy... Insert swears. Also, do you know where the eggnog is? That's what I'm here to go get. Yes, ma'am, the eggnog is, give specific location, gallon size is in the middle shelf, bottom shelf has half gallons, and quart size is on the second to top shelf. Thanks. What, you're not gonna walk me there? Sorry, ma'am, but I've got a rude employee here I need to discipline. Leo here's going with me as my witness. That's right. You know, just in case he tries to stir up trouble with corporate by claiming wrongful termination. Uh, one sec. Hey, uh, random coworker, can you show this customer where the eggnog is? I gotta handle this. Playing along? Sure thing, boss. Right this way, ma'am. And he leads her off to the eggnog. Just to keep up the charade, I pull Matt along outside. Come on, man, acting like you don't work here. And I told you that costume goes against dress code. Seriously, man, you know this'll cost you your job. My check behind me? No, Karen. You owe me one for this. And I think I'll cash in that favor for... a bacon temptation omelet at IHOP. And thus, our intrepid trio escaped that encounter and went forth to the local house of pancakes where we ate. Parting ways, Leo and I returned to see Karen stomping out of there. I had my window roll down and I could hear a bit of her loudly ranting about lazy workers these days and need to report them all to that manager. So we walk back in and I ask random coworker, 
So, uh, I guess that was a grade A Karen? Random coworker knowing what I mean? I think you mean Tropical Storm Karen. She yelled at a couple of kids in Halloween costumes. Eh, glad I wasn't here. She kept asking me where you went. I just told her that after terminating that guy, you went out to lunch. She only got angry about that. Good thing you aren't a manager. Light elbowing. Well, here's hoping nothing comes out of this. Oh, uh, yeah, random coworker, we got you something. I hand him a take-home box with some pancakes. Think of it as, I'm sorry you had to deal with a Karen pancakes. I told Matt about the aftermath. He laughed and told me she also yelled at someone in the parking lot, thinking they were the cart pusher. It was just some dude getting a cart. Lastly, it seems like she didn't file a complaint, or if she did, it got ignored. Or management hasn't told anyone. So far, no sign of her, and I'm glad. Okay, this story was, um, really charming. It really makes me think of that one movie, um employee of the month i believe it's with the uh, jessica simpson she's the hot girl the hot new girl at work and i don't know just the antics that they get to in this story it really reminds me of that movie and i find it charming because i don't know i just like it they had each other's back this story's called someone dressed in a completely different uniform probably doesn't work here i'm not the best with stories so bear with me I work in IT and my uniform consists of smart trousers and shoes as well as a cyan blue polo shirt with a dark blue jumper over the top. This uniform has our company logo on it as well as some large text on the back which is just IT related stuff. I also wear a branded lanyard with our logo on too. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet. I'm from the UK. So if anyone else is, I'm sure you'll know the exact supermarket I'm talking about. This specific supermarket's uniform is orange, and definitely not blue or navy. In fact, it's pretty much the complete opposite. I visit this certain store every day to get my lunch, and I've occasionally had people ask me, Do you work here? And it's baffled me to say the least. I'll normally politely explain that I don't and move on with my day. But recently, I visited and was introduced to one of the most miserable and downright rude people I've met since I was born. I'm in an aisle grabbing a meal deal and this lady in a mobility scooter enters the same aisle as me from the other end and is browsing the shelves. It's not super busy and these aisles weren't very long as it was a smaller branch of the supermarket. I notice her but pay no attention as she's just another member of the public at this time so I just continue browsing. She was pretty poorly dressed and looked to be in her mid-fifties. A few minutes pass and I'm happy with my average sandwich and snack combo. And as I'm about to walk away, she shouts, Oi! Quite loudly. At first, I didn't pay attention, but I turned my head towards her once she shouted, Hello! Are you deaf? Quite obviously at me. Fair to say, I was a bit taken back by it, and also quite confused. Being the slightly hesitant Brit I am, I just turn and look at her for a few seconds to confirm if she's shouting at me, which she was. The lady looked at me and it was obvious that she was peeked off about something. She made a visible huff before driving over to me and shouting as she went, Why do you never have any bloody Horlicks anymore? I had to Google what it was as I had no idea. I'm sorry? I said, why don't you have Horlicks anymore? I always used to buy that here. I'm sorry, I don't work. I don't care if you're sorry, it's not good enough, is it? At this point, I should have said again, I didn't work here. But I stupidly said, I'm not a big supermarket name. Maybe try going to another shop for it? I've been coming here longer than you, so I think I know what you have. I knew I needed to get out of this situation. So once again, I tried to explain that I don't work here. I don't work here, so there's no point in talking to me. Right. I want a manager. Yo, voicey veterans, quick little side note from your dear captain. I care very much about your eardrums, so I'm giving you a quick little scream warning because I'm going to scream. I don't work here. I walk off shaking my head, but she doesn't say anything back. Grabbing a bag and heading to self-checkout, it was pretty obvious that the rest of the shop had become very quiet, with people shuffling around awkwardly, 
as us Brits would do in the situation. I get to the checkout and start to scan my things when out of nowhere this lady comes into view with someone who actually worked here. Him? I turn to look at them both. The guy she's pretty much dragging down the aisle looked so confused as she's pointing at me. Someone in a blue uniform that she thinks works in this store which has orange uniforms. The guy beside her was wearing orange. Surely it's not difficult to notice the difference? I walk up to them and explain to the lady once again that I don't work here. The other guy backs me up explaining that I'm not wearing the store uniform and that I definitely don't work here. He apologizes to me and as I'm replying, she cuts in again. Well, can someone just help me? I apologize to the guy and explain that I have to go. I finish with my shopping and get the hell out of there. No idea how the rest of the conversation went with her, but at this point I didn't care. I've never seen that lady again, so maybe she's gone to another bigger store that stocks what she wants? Or maybe I'll meet her again. Only time will tell. NOTE! Honestly, this Horlick stuff looks pretty grim. Not sure what the fuss is about. Alright, I'm gonna skip the whole, perhaps there's a rational explanation as to why she did that. Perhaps uh, she's colorblind. I'm gonna skip it, even though I just said it. The real thing I want to say is, what the Horlick is a Horlick, or our Horlicks is Horlicks. That sounds like something I should censor, honestly. Good God, the taste of some people. Oh man, okay, I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere about Horlicks being an acquired taste because you gotta lick it or something. <sighs> there's something there. I probably would have thought of it, but I'm just gonna let you guys, I don't know, go to town on it. <laughs> this story's called, Still Not a Nurse. Okay, so this was about seven or eight years ago, but I was only reminded of it recently by my mom. For context, I used to work for a well-known bed shop as a sales assistant. At the time, the uniform was a hideously unfitting pale blue cotton shirt, exact same color as the nurse's cribs at the hospital, with the company logo embroidered on it very largely on one side. My grandpa had been rushed into the hospital and was being kept in for a little while and I was going straight from work to visit him. So while visiting my grandpa, I needed the loo. I left his ward and started heading to the visitor's toilets at the end of the corridor. In the next room along, loads of alarms were going off and everyone had rushed into it. A good few rooms further down, a guy poked his head out and asked me to come and look at his dad's open source. I just said, oh, really sorry, I don't work here, I'm just heading to the loo, whilst both pointing at my giant logo on the shirt and carrying on. All well and good, go to the loo and return to my grandpa's room. Twenty minutes later, visiting hours ended, so I start to leave with my mom and gran. I go on ahead because I'm the driver and my gran walks with a stick, so I was gonna get to the car and bring it around to the pickup point. As I'm scuttling down the corridor, a hand reaches out from the room, grabs me by the shirt, and pulls me in. I'm a bit bewildered and caught off guard now, and I was also awful with confrontation then. I was only about 20 and I'm 5'2". The guy is shouting at me because I didn't come back after I had been to the toilet, and holding me by my shirt and putting me towards his dad's open bed sores asking what I'm going to do to help him. Before I could answer, my mom burst in having seen me get grabbed. She ran down, wondering what the fuck was happening. I had told them of the mix-up, laughing it off after the loo, so she had a tough idea already. She shouts at him to get his hands off her daughter and that, unless you want her to sell you a bed for when he gets out of here, she is not the person you need. The guy sees my shirt again with the name embroidered across half of it and finally clocks what happened. Does he apologize? Does he fornication under consent of the king? No. Instead, he shouts at us for invading his dad's privacy whilst his sores were out. They were near his bum. And saying he was going to buzz for security. In the end, I basically had to drag my mom and gran out of the hospital before they went full mama bear on him. <laughs> Times two. <laughs> okay, um, that's a terrifying story. Don't just randomly grab people, nurses, even nobody. Just don't grab anybody. Unless, of course, it's consensual grabbing, in which case you have my full, okay, go ahead, grab whoever wants to be grabbed by you specifically. I don't want to hear none of this, oh, they were asking to be grabbed, you know, looking so grabbable like that. No, they weren't, unless they specific, like I just said, okay, 
<laughs> I was stupid. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.